We are sorry for the video, video we made. We are so, so sorry. We are sorry. So, so sorry. We saw all the comments, but when we are doing the video, our intention was not to do child, child abuse or child molestation. We just did it. We just did the video. My, my role. I'm the wicked landlord. landlord. I'm the wicked landlord. Wicked landlord. Wicked landlord. And, and I'm the tenant. Yes. I, I used to, I used, I used, I used to wicked my tenant. Yes. Ne, you used to wicked me. I remember G. You can scroll down. Scroll down on our, our video. Scroll down our video. See Amanda here. Yeah. Look at Amanda. Look at her mother here. Yeah. We didn't do anything. Say, talk. Talk. Say, we, say, we didn't do anything. No. We didn't do we anything. Did not do anything to her mother. Amanda, take. Take. See Amanda here. Yeah. Please, so they didn't do anything. The room they used for the comedy is my room, so they didn't do anything. Please, please, so look at we Amanda. We did not do anything. Here. See Amanda here. Yeah. We have already bought her hair. Where is her hair? Where Amanda here? Yeah. Hey, okay, see Amanda here. Yeah. We have already babbled our hair. Nothing in the hair. Look at our See Amanda here. Yeah, we don't do anything. When we are doing the hair. Did, 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 see Amanda, so, see our hair. We have babbled her. hair. Please. We, do not, we are so, 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 so sorry. So sorry. I'm you, sorry for the scroll video. Down, scroll down in our video. Scroll down. You will see. My role is a wicked landlord. I'm a wicked landlord. And this is the tenant. Please. One day. Yes. One day. Just watch. You will see another skit. I wicked my tenant. <laughs> our hand. The, the, I can do a money, you have money. I can do a state. We are so, so sorry. In our video, we, we didn't do one that you like. Hmm. This apology came after the skits makers were faced with backlash on social media and forced to take down the post. According to the Vanguard in the viral clip, the comedian was seen entering his apartment with a two year old who he portrayed as his daughter, and they both greeted another skit maker playing the role of the landlord, making sexual faces as he cited the girl. The girl is then seen exiting her father's apartment in the second scene, and the landlord lured her with a drink and took her to his room. The father then emerges from his room, noticing that his daughter is missing, and goes outside to meet the landlord, only to discover that his daughter's underwear is outside his landlord's room, and the girl can be heard crying. The fact that something as serious as pedophilia and sexual abuse was trivialized and considered a joke is so disturbing, and a huge indicator of a dysfunction in our system. Coupled with the Dalai Lama case from earlier this week, it is important to acknowledge that there is a problem and start to understand how we can safeguard our children from predators. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 You could also tweet to us at WeShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WeShow. So you see this this video when i saw because I, I kept seeing people repost and say report the speed report the speed and i'm like what's going on what's going on and i try i watched the video and for the life of me i didn't understand what was going on because first of all they tried to dress the girl they put clothes in her hey. leggings and i think you not find adults I, do you understand First of all, when I saw when that video, I mean, I, I have a group on Instagram, a mm. couple of my friends, and that was where somebody sent it to the group and say report this page. Yeah. So when I opened the video, the, the only thing I saw was the little girl walking into the gate, and I saw the bomb pad, and I knew, okay, this is wrong. I didn't even finish the video. <laughs> report straight. And for me, it, first of all, what were you thinking? Mm -hmm. What were you thinking? An adult... Play. I mean, we know how um, the movie scene is make believe. Yeah. So if I thought they want to actually tell the story of a landlord, you know, assaulting an underage mm -hmm. child, mm -hmm. it could be a, a an adult Not that a looks like a child. Not a two Not year a two, old. Like it's just. It's so it's wrong just, on so many on levels. different levels it's on several quite, levels. <laughs> and I think it's that, quite disturbing yeah. for me. It's just quite Very disturbing, good. and the fact that I understand their apology, but. Mm is it they could have given the whole process a bit more thought at the very beginning mm -hmm. because like i said it's just like the dalai lama case if you're coming out to apologize that means you know it's wrong, it's wrong. you know it's wrong so did they even really understand so that? yes that's another thing that's what that's what that's I was, that's another what I was thing. so i was it i was going like to come to that because because, yeah, because at the, you're trying to explain how the video was conceptualize is mm. worse it's like you're giving damning evidence to your worse. own case do you understand yeah. and without even knowing it and that's the thing about social media mm -hmm. you put all these things out there and for the life of me you can't 
you no matter how many videos you do you can't explain to everyone Everybody. your intention mm -hmm. you can't show okay. everyone how intentional you what, you, what you what you meant, meant. Yes. There's, yes. It, there's no amount of the the, the destruction has already mm -hmm. been done, done. Mm -hmm. so there's no there's no coming back from that so so this is my problem with skits makers these days right if you notice a lot of times they're either doing something sexual i was i was saying to the makeup room, another one that pisses me off is the one where they're depicting the ladies as come i'll give you money follow me to my room whatever i understand the that you're trying you know but it's just, it's becoming too much it's it's like if you're not putting out content like that now your content is not going to yeah. go viral your page your skits you won't become a popular skits maker so i'm asking where do we now start to draw the line because you see this one these guys didn't know they did anything mm -hmm. wrong in the first place trust me it. If people didn't start to call them out the way that they did, for a very, they didn't take down that video for a very long time. It took Barista Streets and um, Nap Tip to actually speak to them. They're like, you have to take them before they actually took them because they didn't think there was anything yeah. in their heads. We're just doing mm -hmm. a skit, and I'm like, there's not, there's, it is wrong on every level, on yeah. every level. So what are you saying to people? Do you know what pissed me off? At some point in the video, now they now even used. Bobo, I don't know if you know Bobo juice. So, that was what they used to attract like to the girl. I'm like, so, like so, a child's snack. What, what are you so saying? So it's intentional. What it are was you thought, saying? It was well thought after. And I think, I think for me, um, maybe it's because in Nigeria, the conversation regarding so, um, sex offenders is not so prominent and people are not making noise about it. But I mean, with this, I, I've noticed that a couple of NGOs are now speaking up about mm -hmm. it. Like the conversation has, has come up again and I like that fact. However... Do we actually have a sex offenders record in Nigeria? Do we? <laughs> okay. So funny thing you mentioned that yeah. because you know when I saw the topic we were doing we were trying to do our Stop. own research. private research <laughs> investigation and then I found out that the NAPTIP yeah. is the agency the um, Nigerian agency in charge of the People trafficking. Yeah. Trafficking. Mm. But it has to do with trafficking of persons. Yes. And initially, it kind of, it took me off balance. Because I, I kept asking Chinelo. I said, Chinelo, how, how do they work together? Like, and then I saw that on the website, there was a, some um, partnership, mm -hmm. let me put it that way, between NAPTIP yeah. and um, the agency called NSOD. So okay, yeah, it's the, uh, the Nigerian Sex Offender and Sex Provider Database. So mm. somehow, um, NAPTIP is the one in charge of the records for sex offenders in Nigeria. Mm. And still very quite surprising because when you look at the name as against what and, what and their brief, because I went on Google to check their check, brief, what yeah. they're tasked with, is, is targeted at sex offenders and rehabilitation of those who were sexually, you know, okay, yeah. Yeah. Well, committed yes. crime. So, um, I, it's, it, you know, it's, I, I start to wonder why uh, NAPTIP are the ones in charge of the record for sex offenders. And then you dive deep and you find out that we don't even have enough records of sex offenders sex in offenders. the country. Mm. I think Lagos State has about um maybe less than less than a thousand mm -hmm. <laughs> while mm -hmm. akt re has recorded i think 570 something mm -hmm. so a few is just in trinkles and you and i know that in nigeria in my that. when i think about it n eight out of every 10 women yeah children let me let me go to, let me just state to, to the adults yeah what so in your women? let me stay to the adults because that one we can all confirm yeah Eight out of every ten women mm -hmm. have been sexually abused. Yeah. So where are those abusers? <laughs> and these abusers range from school, teachers, lesson, home lesson, yeah. school lesson, after um, school lesson, um, relatives, PE teachers, because you have after sports, mm -hmm. you have different after school activities, sporting activities, mm -hmm. you have. Um, you now come home, you have uncles, domestic you staff. have yeah. domestic staff, church. you have family. Then I'm just taking it, each, then you go to the church, you have family, you have colleagues, you go to the office, you have bosses, you have managers, you have different levels. Yeah. So in Nigeria, we know that this sex offense 
mm. and sex offenders list in Nigeria and the database should be more than what we currently have. So I do not know whether it is an issue of not being able, is it that the cases have not gone up? Mm. Because when I looked at it, when I looked at the record of NAPTIC, if I look at the record of NAPTIC, they only have about 1,189 1, records, mm. total records. They have 232 convictions, and then they have 546 still in court, and then 187 under investigation. I know that this record should be a more whole lot else. more than yep, this. It should be. But why does this happen? Because it goes back to the point where we were talking about, you know, a few days ago, it was on parenting and how you should caution your kids and put them in line so that from a young age, they would mm -hmm. be able to tell the difference between yeah. when someone is touching them mm -hmm. in areas that they're not supposed to mm -hmm. and as against when someone is being friendly with yeah. them. Yeah. So we know that this record should be more than this. And we know that this is a problem in Nigeria already, which is a record, having record of anything. The database. Mm -hmm. Database is always a huge issue yeah. because from a population of a, about a hundred, over 111 million yeah. people in Nigeria, you cannot mm -hmm. tell me that in a country where we know very well that more than 50% of the population of women in Nigeria have been sexually abused. And we know that we have over at least 20% of the population in Nigeria supposedly supposed to be down here <laughs> as records mm -hmm. of sex offenders and they're not there. And why is this so? But, That's but my then question. Again, are the cases being reported? There is that part of it. There's that angle. But the ones that have been recorded, yeah. we know. Even though it takes people a while sometimes to come out to report, but even after years, this record should also still go down yeah. as part of the records for this. So I Especially think, if um, there's a conviction. NAPTIP is... Well, it was a body that was formed not too long ago. It's quite it's formed recently, and then they started to take on these things. But actually, from the time when we had, I remember when we had that princess story, and yes. all of that, that's when this body became active, oh, right? Okay. So let me say that that's probably why we're having the numbers that it is that we're having these days. Because now we're having people say, okay, hmm. these are the toll lines to you know call if you, there's any issue like this. This is hmm. who you should speak to. This is so. I think people are beginning. People are becoming more. Aware. aware right yeah. and people now people are no longer holding it back and saying okay i don't want to say anything because my family you know if even if your family won't believe you there are now bodies that you can actually go to to tell that yeah. this is what is going on mm -hmm. this i've been sexually abused in so and so way and then it can be taken taken up from yeah. there but now let's now let's not look at it from the point of the children mm -hmm. exactly now i mean these people are predators so to speak I can never understand the concept of pedophilia and why somebody would even be a pedophile. And I said in the beginning that if you have sexual pleasures that you want to fulfill, there are several other ways you can fulfill your sexual um, pleasures. Why are you, why are you abusing a child? They are adults. Why? But I guess. It's oh. this demon possession. It's 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 insane. No, there's it's something wrong with insane. you. So I I wanted to actually just even point to the fact that I I agree that. Um, the citizens have experienced, I mean, from our parents' time to now, I'm certain that there have been too many incidents that must have been reported. Mm. However, when you look at countries like the United States and you see how serious they take sex offenders, sex offenders. do you know that a sex offender that has been, you know, arrested and mm -hmm. taken to jail, your life is gone. First of, of all, being a sex offender, your life is over. <laughs> because even if, let's say, you get a good trial, one year, two years, or if you're, un if you're unlucky, they give you life. But if you save your time, yeah. coming out of jail is another issue. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot get a job. Yeah. Yes. You cannot even live in a, in a neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Every, neighborhood, every will neighborhood will know yeah. who you are. Yeah. And all of these things trickles down to the fact that government has to help us fight against this. In, in 1993, when um, Bill Clinton was still the president, he actually announced and gave and you know declared a law that every state in the country is required to update their predator list and it has to be open to the public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that means that in and if you notice most of these communities, everybody knows everybody. Of course. So you cannot move to a new neighborhood go and start pretending to be who <laughs> you're not. Person. They would drag you That's out. That's why you have a social security. So which is number. the reason why yeah. I mean in Nigeria, I, I 
think there are certain things that need to be taken seriously because I, I can just imagine, um, you know how we, we have that very annoying relative, somebody that is not even related to, uh, with this person by blood. You're already mm. saying this is my own family friend. This is my, and these are the kind of people that, e that easily pre like, you that know, pray. prey on these people. I've had my fair share of that experience. And even growing up, I couldn't tell my parents what was happening. However, I knew it was wrong. Yeah. So that sensitization, it comes from the family, but it also has like the government and you know public bodies have a lot of you know things to do regarding this just to ensure. I like what you've said. The sensitization comes from the family, right? And I think we would come back to that. Let's yeah. just let's take a break and open our phone lines. When we come back, we'll continue with that. Okay, if you just tuned in to our Ladies' Night Out and we're discussing the topic, safeguarding our children from predators. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. You could also tweet to us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Our phone line is also now open. Please call us on 070-250-0779. So before we went on the break, Larry, we were talking about sensitization from the family, and I think that's where it begins. Because you see, in most cases, children are afraid to speak up. So mm -hmm. something like this happens, maybe it, especially when it's happening from another family member. Mm -hmm. They are scared to speak up. They are scared to tell their parents mm -hmm. what's going on. They are scared to even talk to maybe siblings. That happened to me. I mean, it, it was something that happened um, growing up. My dad was always going on night shifts a lot of the time. And I had this cousin that was living with us at home. Mm. So he started, you know, when I'm sleeping, you know, all those naughty. And I didn't even understand why I was 13 at the time. That lasted till I was in SS3, which was like 16. And it was my best friend that forced me to tell my, my older sister, wow. who sat all the female in the house down, like all of us young children, to say, this is what happened to Alero. If this person is around, make sure you do this. We ensured that the person knew we knew. And he moved out of the house eventually. But mm -hmm. imagine when you actually speak. I didn't want to speak up because I was afraid. Mm -hmm. And this, we have so many people that have had this experience that would most likely not even... I mean, I, I was telling you about my former colleague yeah. when I was working that she, oh, oh, she was supposed to go to church. Her parents mm -hmm. told her to go to church. She went to see the pastor. And, you know, being with the pastor, he molested her or raped her. She cried, went back home to her parents. Her parents followed her back to the pastor's place only to go and apologize to this guy. And th till to this, she's an adult today. She's married. And she said, that is the reason why I asked my family. Because I can't come to tell you that this person assaulted me and you are going to apologize, apologize. because he's a pastor. So it's, it has a lot to do with the home our upbringing and what we allow because a lot of times we don't focus on the fact that i think our children ignore that these things can traumatize you and destroy your life eventually and they just let it happen saying our oh parents. don't worry you'll be fine our parents mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah so okay so now let's ask or rather let's let's discuss this how then do we protect our children how do we safeguard our children from these situations mm -hmm. how do we protect them from these predators mary I think for me, the first thing is getting the child to be comfortable to tell you, you know, anything. anything. Yeah. You, get, you, yeah. said, you said, you spoke, said something about your daughter and you said, if you tell her you're not feeling well, she's constantly checking up on you. Mm -hmm. That's because there's a relationship, relationship there. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You have a voice. I said something as well last week, Tuesday. I was like, um, I might not have had the, you know, close being able to say the details. But I had a voice. I had an opinion. Mm -hmm. I could say, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, if they actually the first time and you don't really feel comfortable, mm -hmm. they can read, you know, you your, know, your, the, your, the, your past yes yeah. about it. That, okay, you're not comfortable with this. And you're free to do, like, take your decision. Like, okay, we'll figure that out later and stuff. You know, so I think that's where it starts from. That being, whether the child is a quiet child or is an outspoken child, being able to be able to relate whatever problem it is. My father used to say something. He said, Mary, even if you steal eh, and you come back and run inside this house, I will first of all lock the gates to protect you. You know, and that put something in my head to say, whatever it is, no matter how bad, back. you can always come back, come back and we, yeah. yes, you understand. Yeah. So that is where it starts from. When you have a safe place, a safe home, mm -hmm. a safe heaven, then 
when these things, when, you know, signs begin to occur, oh, okay, this person is touching you in a certain way, you can go back and you can tell, you know, your guardian or your parents to say, oh, this is what is happening or this is how I feel, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. I think that's where it starts from for me. And, and I think there are certain people that, some uncles per se or mm. aunties that always act too nice. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, father figure. I mean, there have been se several situations that the person would pretend to just be so nice, always available. <laughs> Sometimes make you make the, the <clears throat> child trust you so, so much, much that even some, there's, some there's some parents that also, you know, you are going to work or whatever. You're told to this person, please definitely them. look after my yeah. child. But you don't know what's going on. So I, I like the fact that parenting now is really changing for a lot of people. Um, they're focusing on their children. That, that sensitization thing is not... It's not one person's job. It takes a village. Mm -hmm. It takes a village to ensure that a human being is fine in every aspect of their life. So that sensitization is one thing that the parents need to just pay. Like, you have to, you have, to have extra sixth sense. If you don't have money to buy a nanny cam at home, you should be able to, you know, put different things. Like, different people just have to be okay. around that child. I, I think another point for me is when children grow up to become teenagers... Mm. Um, the art of teaching the child to say no. I know sometimes we can't really be explicit with our parents about certain things, but you have people who it could it could be consensual. Mm. The sex can be consensual, but the person, the lady is in pain. The lady is not enjoying it. The lady doesn't want it, but you've not really have had that sensitization or. You've not been taught how to say no, how to say, I am not enjoying this. I don't think I want it. You know, it's, it's because that's another part of sexual abuse that happens, that's not being talked yeah. about, that even happens to a lot of adults. Mm -hmm. And so you have a lot of females who are probably having, you know, sexual encounters. Like I'll take, I'll take an instance at the gym. I didn't read any meaning into it, but I noticed that, you know, my trainer was being a bit too, I, I'm not too one familiar. to, yeah, too <laughs> familiar. I'm not one to abruptly just push you away, you know. And I felt very embarrassed that it took an older woman to come and, to come and tell me to say, oh, don't you think this is a bit too... And, you know, I've been thinking about it in my head, oh, but yeah. I really just couldn't say the, oh, please, can you stop hugging me this way can you stop <laughs> you know because it's it's very subtle do you understand mm -hmm. it's, it's it's just and you let it if you let it go so that's, on so that's, that's how it starts grooming. yeah that's so that's starts. the grooming you know you, like on the show a few days ago yeah Mama was yeah saying you know, it, was saying that about the grooming. it's the grooming because it starts from little things there mm -hmm. are a lot of things we in different ways we've all been groomed in yeah, yeah. To, to, to accept different, different things, things. Mm -hmm. yeah you've been told for years this is okay you've had that like alera said you had that family member you have that person who has been pushed onto you as a family member maybe a cousin a distant cousin a distant uncle not even a family member mm. not even related by blood but living with you um, and you know, our parents were very welcoming yep. then. So you used to have different people come by the house. Oh, your uncle is coming by. He's staying with you. He's staying with us for a week, two weeks, and what have you. And you're like, okay, no problem. You have to move to this person's room or you have to move to clear the guest room or something like that. <laughs> Same thing it was an event to look forward to, but for some people, yeah. it wasn't. Because when that uncle comes around, things happen. Mm. Yeah. And you know, when you have, par then our parents were not mm. this enlightened. So they always believed, I don't know if they believed we did the worst or we told the, the worst mm, lies stories, because yes. it's it's funny that you would walk up to your parents for those who had that the courage yeah. and the confidence and openness and trust with their with their family mm. to be able to walk up and say oh dad i i have something to tell you uncle did this 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 yeah. and i felt very uncomfortable about it or uncle touched you you as at then you probably would express it the same way it mm -hmm. comes to you uncle yeah. touched me in, in my private part or uncle did this or uncle i don't like he's hugging <laughs> me too tightly and you know i don't know whether it was 
this be, I don't know what word to use, why the, the parents of then didn't pay attention to all those signs. Because when you have kids that actually come up to you to tell you stuff, now we see how important it is. Yes. Because then we just used, didn't used to tell anybody anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can hardly, even, even within, it's now as we've grown older that we are starting to you know, be intentional about relationships, friendships, friendships. and the people we have around us. Yeah. But growing up, everybody was just somebody around mm -hmm. you. Like, but everyone learned how to, I think for our generation, we learned how to be a bit independent mm -hmm. early. So you just learned how to be on your own, in your own world, even though you had a family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, be, and it didn't, it's for some people, it didn't even get to the point where disbelief was the point. Yeah. You didn't even tell because you don't even know how to, put it forward that this happened. You don't know how, what to expect. Are you going to be beaten for even allowing yourself to be in that environment? In place, or what? Yes. Like, you know, especially if it's a case of, oh, maybe your uncle gave you sweets mm. and then told you to come to his room and sit down and you sat down. It's almost like you are the stupid one. Yes. I, I think you know? even for a long time, yeah, like as an adult, if, if I did go to a guy's house mm. and, and he tried such, I would actually keep quiet and blame myself because society has said you took yourself there. Yeah. Do you understand? So in order for me not to have that, I set my boundaries. I was able to set boundaries to say, I'm not coming to you your house. Yourself. Like, I don't care if you're the strongest or most strong willed, you wouldn't. I, I'm not going to set myself up for disaster. Because I know that, oh, okay, either happen. I might not be able to say, because I'll be feeling like, oh, yeah, you put yourself in this situation, you mm. did this to yourself, you know. So let me avoid it. You want to see me, please, let's go out to the public. Can we have lunch? Can we have dinner in the public? Where I, I, I have control of, of my, myself, <laughs> where I'm not going to blame myself. You know, because people are going to blame it as, oh, boy, you went there, now what were you expecting? Yeah. Sure. Well, does that give you the right? Mm. It doesn't. Yeah. I was also going to say, another thing is, as adults, we need to always watch our reaction as parents, as adults. You know, because children mm. would actually read Take your a, reaction yeah. to know how they're going to tell you about mm. things. So let me give an example. My daughter sends me a message because she's at, at her grandparents. And then she sends me a message yesterday and she said, Mommy, I'm very sorry. And then I'm like, what okay, let me wait for them to Um, But Uncle E lost my wristwatch. <laughs> and I'm still waiting for, you what know, the rest. And I'm like, okay. And she goes, that's because I gave it to him. I'm like, great. So now, we now understand. He's taking responsibility. I can now answer you. <laughs> so I was like, my darling, why did you give him the watch in the first place, number one? When did you give him the watch? Because in the first place, this watch was supposed to be used in school. And I told you the reason you had this word because I wasn't going to get tired any form of accessory in school in the first place. But I'm like, okay, you need to be able to tell the time. You need to know, okay, time for prep, time for this, time for that. All right, no problem. Have the watch. And I asked her these questions and then she answered me. And I smiled. I'm like, in my head, I was like, thank God she okay. could at least come to say, look, this, this thing happened though. I know it's my fault. that you're going to be upset. <laughs> I'm sorry. But then this is how it's happened. And I believe that's how to work with children. Make them understand. Yeah. You're not the bad person. What you have done it's is bad. bad right? Yeah. Mm. It's not, yeah. that's not the you. you that's a bad And that's, that's, that's the policy yeah. between myself and my child. I always let her know, look, I understand. And I need you to understand that this act is a bad act. No. Does it make you a terrible person? No. 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 Does it mean you should do it again? No. no. Yeah. Right? They not, that way, the child would understand that, look, I get it, I've messed up, but it doesn't necessarily make me a bad person. And it's okay to mess up. That's another thing I preach. It's okay to make mistakes. I even use myself as an example sometimes. I'm like, oh, mommy did this today. I'm like, sometimes I, I even pretend, I'm like, oh, dang, I just did this. And she's like, what's up? Like, Can you imagine? Just so that you understand that everybody does mistakes. it. Yeah. So when things like this then happen, you would notice that the child would not hold back from telling you, this is what 100%. instead the child will even feel the need to open up and let you know that dad mom this is what actually happened i don't know what does this make me but you know so parents 
your child comes to tell you, and the next thing you just go, wow, wildfire. <laughs> I get that sometimes you can yeah. actually be very angry. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I try so hard. I'll be okay. I went over, I tell her, I am very upset right now. Mm -hmm. And she was, can I let you be for a while? Yes, please, let me be. Nice. And then I come back and I'm like, look, that got me really mad. I don't like it, but how do we now address this? Mm -hmm. And I, that should always be the approach because mm -hmm. then the child is now more open. Free to have because this is how my mother you. actually brought me up. I don't think there's anything I cannot tell my mom today. I'm not sure there's anything I cannot tell my mother. Mm -hmm. And when I say anything, I actually mean anything. And that's because my mother will judge you. She will, in fact, she will even abuse you, Joyce. But, you know, the fact that you can actually open up, because I know cancel from her is definitely coming from a place of wisdom and experience. Mm. So I know that no matter as I won't take mess up, she will still, you know, she will still understand and say, okay, that's a maybe safe you should space. have done this. That, that's, that's a what I'm safe going to space. Create that safe space. That's and a thing safe is, space. Labels. If you are not uncle, you are not uncle. If you are not auntie, that's, you are that's not another aunt. thing. Yep. If you are mommy's friend, thing. you are mommy's friend. If yeah. you are daddy's friend, you are daddy's friend. I say that Uncle Tunde is not your uncle. Uncle Tunde is your daddy's friend. Mm. Auntie Bimbo is not my sister. Auntie Bimbo is mommy's friend. friend. So that way we understand. Well, we come yeah. from a family. Culture. You know, exactly. this culture. NJC, forget take, culture. I understand that, but it's going to take a while for that to be embedded into the system. No, yeah, see, I think. That, and that's why we have the problem we're having now. Because those children then believe when Uncle Tunde does something to her, she feels like, oh, mommy's brother or daddy's brother mm -hmm. i probably shouldn't say this or i shouldn't do yeah, that yeah you're right but, no, but it also it. it also speaks to the as a parent it's your responsibility i know i know that you can't really be available for every situation but mm. it's your responsibility to have the all eyes and to pay attention to everyone that is around your child yeah. and a lot of times ch some parents actually dismiss you know their children what their children say so if your child should actually just come and tell you this is what is happening believe them believe them first before you even like believe them have that conversation with the with child them, yeah. before you even take it up with whoever is involved, being accused yeah because a lot of time the resistance comes from the child being afraid like you said if that safe place is not being created mm -hmm. you have wasted your time that's a child that probably would experience some type of disaster that you cannot even come out from at the end of the day and that's why the trust is necessary yeah 100 yeah. the trust is necessary we're coming from a generation where discipline was seen as different mm -hmm. discipline was actual discipline mm -hmm. the bible says spare the rod and spoil, spoil the, the child, child. <laughs> so there's a little bit of discipline involved mm -hmm. guaranteed but we're coming from a place where we felt it was a bit extreme at, at the time. But yeah. I won't lie to you. Some of those experiences <laughs> is what made me who I am yes, suddenly yes. as the strong person I am today. I and then I look at the next generation and I'm like, hmm. yeah, we have a lot. That the way problem is that these days people to want see. to be cool parents, right? And I say, see, there's nothing like cool parenting. There is. Parenting, there is. Alero. My dad was a cool dad. Mm -hmm. And the, the, my dad never hit us for one day. In fact, it's always worse when he talks to you because you're finished. Cool parenting doesn't mean that your, your, your father or your mother will, will hit you. What okay. I'm saying is, you want to be that mom or dad that... Mm. I don't know. I don't know the I best understand. way to, yeah. to explain this now. Up and today. In, in that, in the, in the bit of trying to do that, you are then losing yeah. your child. Yeah, because I, I have a friend who's, whose mom was the coolest and... I'm not really particularly happy about how her kids turned out because, mm. you know, it puts me in a position to ask, was she too lenient? Nice. You know, because she was a nice one and then her kids are, yeah, either one is on drugs and she's still, she's still not been mm. as <laughs> firm tight, as, tight yeah, yeah, but, you know. Yeah, you, ha you have a comment. I have a comment. Yes. Yeah, let's okay. take a comment. So let's take one comment and... Hello, ladies. You all look super delightful. Loving the conversation going on. Just to add to all that has been said, I believe it's also very important for parents oh, wow. and guardians to learn to draw boundaries for children in terms of the names we call people. Uncles, aunties, cousins are relatives only by blood mm. and not by title. Also, that even though these relatives are related with them, does not mean that they have the right to make you feel uncomfortable by their actions. Yeah. Those not related to them should be called Mr. or Miss. This is a major confusion that children struggle with, and parents need to be intentional about this. 
the Polish coach. Mm. That's exactly what I was saying. Call them what no, they boy, are. That one is Thank hard you so much, the Polish coach. <laughs> 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 Call the Polish coach, rather. <laughs> okay. Um, this was a very interesting conversation. Very, right? very, I, very, I, very. It's something that cannot be over discussed. Mm -hmm. We need no. to continue talking about this because it will keep happening. More and more sensitization. Yeah. Anyway, so before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagement. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. Nearly 100,000 sex offenders remain unregistered and are moving freely about the country. The risk that they may strike again grows every day. And this is by Bob Ney. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Thank you, ladies. Bye. Thank you.